Well, I'd like to give this talk about um, Brother Paul, uh, Paul the Apostle, um, the man that was once called Saul, uh, the author of many of the books in the Holy Bible and the New Testament, and I'd just like to cover some thoughts I've considered over the years, and uh, I'd like to share this in to the uh, glory of the Lord and the magnification of his word and uh, and some things that helped me in my studies and uh, looking at the hearts of people and looking at the lives of people and uh, we've been given this precious record of uh, the early church, the apostles and those who served with the apostles and left us a record um, so I've got a list of things to get through but I'd like to share this just to um, in the hope and faith that it would um, well be edifying and also um, increase anybody's understanding or help them in their studies uh, and to magnify the word of God and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I'm not holding. I don't wanna. I think the um, the apostles would be um, abhorrent if if they were to be glorified. So um, this is not about the the man Paul glory and the man Paul. This is about glorifying the man Christ Jesus in Paul. So. Uh, as we look at uh, the apostles, we see we're going to see some um, one uh, wonderful works going on, and so that's the sort of things that, um, I'd like to highlight, um, like the, Paul's purpose in, in in the dispensation of grace and uh, his calling. So I'm going to just some f highlight some observations to lay on the table to give people you know some food something to consider something to inspire something to encourage and yeah, I'm, I'm just going blindly in faith and sharing something I've just got a passion for um, the love of Paul <laughs> the love of our brother Paul he is our brother he's um, he, a, an incredible and so are all the, all the all the brothers and sisters in the, in, in the word, uh, but Paul's just an incred incredible father figure, incredible apostle, and an incredible mission. Um, incredible. <laughs> so, without further ado, I'd just like to. I've left. I've opened up on the Book of Hebrews, and and I've, there's a question mark in there. If you're if you're a a, a, a Christian. Um, and you've come to faith and the salvation in the Lord and you you come across the Christian world and you come across all the age old things that you that as a baby you just haven't got what are they talking about and everyone sounds like an authority on the subject and that there's so much that's gone before us that, that time and time again it has to be sifted through because you know, everyone's coming up the road behind and they have to f fight their way through, find their path through the all the turmoil and, you know, the fiery trial of a Christian and and uh, finding yourself approved and established in the word where from your from your first love, from when you're first saved and your daily walk. So um, one of those things for me was the the you know all the debate on who wrote the um, book of Hebrews you know and, and I think Paul's everybody's favourite choice so um, I, I kind of think <clears throat> thinking about all these things in hindsight which is a wonderful thing to have the hindsight of all this you know coming coming to the table you know at, at the back as we do in this day and age we, we're coming up behind years and years of scholarly observations and 
Christians sharing their testimony and what they've learned. So coming up behind, we've got all this high insight. So it's quite, you know, it's quite easy to, you know, be uh, put your pennies worth on the table with, and you've been freely given all that high insight to be to afford you to make an opinion. So um, without. Um, discrediting anyone else's views from the past because you know that's how we learn we learn sometimes we learn by mistakes and we, we we're corrected we correct our footsteps or our footsteps are corrected and we cry um, in in the heading of the um, it's a church this is a King James church Bible I've got a, a, a brought it from the States they're quite expensive they are expensive but they're uh, that's the only Bible I, that was available that you know I, I that I could find that I I felt comfortable with. I tried many King James Bibles and I got caught up in all the debates and stuff and, and I just wanted a, a healthy King James and uh, I sought this one out. Um, in the title, the writer. Um, I'll just read it quickly. The authorship of Hebrews has been in controversy from the earliest times. The book is anonymous, but the reference in 2 Peter 3 seems conclusive that Paul was the writer. I haven't looked at... Um, I can't... 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. I can't recall that off to mind. I haven't looked it up beforehand. I, I, I never really noticed that before. I'll look at that. But whatever that says, I, the point I want to make is the whole book of Hebrews, I think the point's been missed. Now, personally, I do think it's Paul. And I think it's um, Paul after progressive years of experience and revelation perhaps and I'm just you know this is just my 10 pence worth um, but it's I'll get to the point it's irrelevant but I do I, I believe it was Paul that wrote this book and uh, I think it was uh, in, sanct in Paul's sanctification and up until the end and it um, Perhaps it's a, a book that was written last, so it was written with a bit more hindsight and experience, and a, a lot, possibly a lot more humility. And I think that's the point of the book to the Hebrews: is humility. It's I, I must decrease, that so Christ must increase. And I think that's the purpose of the book of Hebrews. I think that's why there's an an anonymous author, because whoever wrote it has remained invisible and to me the only the most visible other than the Lord Jesus Christ the most invisible person in the scriptures is the one who's there the most and that's Paul and he became invisible he shrank he but he was a bond servant to Christ so Christ was magnified but he was a such a big presence but he always denied himself and his his presence because he was completely fully dedicated to the Lord then he was a prisoner he couldn't he could not because of his heart his testimony he could not get he couldn't stop he had he was chained he 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 couldn't let go of the plow and um, I see a type of Christ in Paul and and that's really what my, my kind of my talks going to be centred around uh, Paul being a, a type of Christ, an exemplar in the Lord's hand. I believe that Paul was the apostle the Lord chose to be the standard apostle for all the other apostles, and he thought because he was the one who ironed out all the apostasy in the church he was the one that went around contending for the faith and bringing the apostles into line and you know if, if the doctrine went to the left he was there to bring it back in line if the doctrine went to the right he was there to bring it back in line and you can see that all through the books of the writings to the Galatians to the Corinthians Paul was there blah, 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 to, to bring it into line to sort, sort the body out he was that standard piece and um, 
I'm going to include the scriptures on it after um, put them on editing. I've got um, quite a few scriptures I want to highlight that show Paul's heart and and uh, to back up what I'm saying. Um, so Paul was uh, like the standard and the the acts of the apostles is kind of like the laying down or the establishing of the not the laying down of the foundation because that was Christ who laid down his life and that's the chief corner foundation and then the apostles are with the foundation and then uh, the saints are, are built upon the foundation with the apostles in Christ um, lively stones so the book of Acts was kind of uh, the, all the works of the apostleship and the sign gifts of of what they were equipped and then laying down their lives so the so the gospel would abound towards all that that had faith and believed and come along later and were built on top of of the foundation and through the work of Jesus Christ in Paul and the, the apostles and the ironing out of, and the, the writing of the scriptures and how it all unfolded and it was recorded and it was established and sealed with the, the blood of the best men um, ever, that ever lived, that ever walked this earth. And, and those men were called of Jesus Christ. They were Christ, Christ's children, Christ's, um, Christ's seed. Um, if we look at Paul, he was uh, his name was Saul, and he was from the tribe of Benjamin. So he had a um, a patriarchal inheritance with blessings. He was in a certain position, and um, so this, he was like a son of man, you know, a, a sinner. But he was a, a, a chosen seed. So he was the son of a son of man in a type. He was he was ungrafted, so he's in, you know, like a fleshy man, a man, a fallen man, and then after um, his salvation, he becomes the son of God, and it's like Christ. He's Christ. He's the son of man. He came in the flesh, although Christ wasn't a sinner, and he never sinned in the flesh. Um, he he suffered in a um, a, a sinful world with. Um, Sim, you know, sin all around him, but he wasn't a sinner. He had a um, a body that would uh, it was human, so it would it had you know it had had its limitations, but it had Christ the Lord housing that body, and um, we see what the Lord done with his body, uh, the transfiguration, and you know. Um, resisting temptation he, he completely conquered everything with a full with 40 you know partly 40 genes and he overcome all those frailties and that but he never sinned and he he couldn't sin he wouldn't sin if um somebody else was in that body well then you know which was impossible um it would have been possible for that that person to sin in that body but that that would never happen because he's a chosen seed and there's only one person who took up that chosen seed and that was Christ and, and that was fulfilling of prophecy so we see a type in, in Paul, a shadow uh, of the Lord working um, when you think of uh, after uh, the um, now the Lord's ministry and the the, the apostleship. Um, now we know that Judas betrayed the Lord, and he lost his apostleship, his bishopric, and it was given to another. Now uh, Peter Ch um, and the apostles decided to call uh, by lots. You know they p picked out two that they thought met the criteria, and then they cast lots to select. Um, I think it was Bartholomew, and he was to replace the um, Judas. So there was twelve. But Paul, now after Christ's um, death, burial, and resurrection, and uh, when the Lord ministered to the saints and the apostles at that time, Paul wasn't in the picture. He wasn't there. He was um, 
he was an antichrist. He was a son of you know a son of man. He was he was against the church. So it's only later on he comes into the picture. So this is um, after Pentecost. And Paul's got the order from the from the Romans and the Jewish authorities to go and stamp out the um, the fire of the gospel, the free course of the gospel, and that's that's where the Lord met him and blinded him in the way, smack. And then Paul was, you know, um, crawled crawled off the roadside to recover and get his sight back. And um, the Lord converted him and chose him and showed, you know, took him up into the third heaven. So the Lord, through Paul, revealed the fullness, the fullness of, uh, you know, what Paul saw unspeakable things. It's only, only over Paul that saw that. I don't. I don't believe. There's no record of the other apostles having that experience. But but, but Paul, he was taken up. And he he discounts himself. He says, "I know. I knew a man." You know, he's not. He wasn't boasting. He was, and he couldn't boast because it, he he was just sharing his testimony, a sacred testimony of what happened to him in um, in Christ. And he was taken up into the third heaven. And he saw unspeakable things. He was he was taken to the end. He saw the he was taken to the finishing line. The Lord said, "There you go, Paul. Now, and now, now I'm going to put you back down. And now that is being revealed in you. And that's what's that's what's revealed in the church. That's what's revealed in the Lord. And that's what the Lord's revealed through Paul in the Scriptures for anyone coming behind to receive to receive the fullness." And Paul received the fullness first, so he was like the first person to pass his driving test, and the Lord qualified him to drive. With, and, and he he and and the Lord was teaching all the other apostles to drive, but Paul was you know on the ground to make sure that they passed their test, and they you know they all passed, and that was by the grace of of the Lord through Paul through Paul's ministry and through the apostles' ministry and his working through the early establishing of, of, of the church, of the building upon the foundation that's laid and then establishing that foundation and sealing it for others to come along and be placed upon it um, by the Lord and Saviour. So we have uh, many uh, types and shadows in Paul's life and either we can see in his heart that uh, he, he he was beloved and he had that graciousness and that grace abounded because by you know by what he suffered you know um, all that weakness it was it's to benefit us it's to benefit those beforehand so he really became a servant of all he really did die for everybody you know he for Christ and uh, and he and he gave up it. He gave up his life at the end, and it's record. I think it's recorded in the Fox's Book of Martyrs. It says that Paul was like um, beheaded in Rome. Um, personally, I, I I think that's a bit too much of a noble death. I think he would have been. Um, I think he would have suffered a worse fate than that, but I might be wrong, and, and that might be an accurate record and a true record. But I don't know, and, and uh, I, I don't know if that can accurately be established. But I, personally, I think he would have that he would have been cruelly tortured and beaten, and you know they would have they the world would have really wanted to get rid of that man, and they would have probably buried him. Um, and and tormented him before that, before they let him have a in you know a, an end to his misery that they wanted that the devil would have wanted to inflict on him, but I don't know that's my speculation. I I, I just believe that he would have had a harder time of it, but I, but I don't know. I'm just speculating. So we see a lot of the. Um, so all the doctrine, really, the whole fullness was revealed in, in Paul, which is outlaid in the scriptures, um, justification through faith and the sanctification of the believer. You know, Paul's like the father for us and um, it's shown, exemplified in the scripture where he says um, he was justified to do all things, but he he gave up up all things so he'd be slave to none of them 
So that's kind of, on one hand you got a, you know, on the left hand you got a load of backsliding uh, difficulties in the body and on the other side you got some really strong right handedness of that's gifted to people and kind of Paul he, he, he even titled himself the chief of all sinners so you, you think what a humble title that is that he's the chief you know he, he labelled himself as one of the chief of sinners you know and I think that covers all of us he covers that type because we could all think of ourselves oh no Paul I think I'm a cheap more a bit of a chiefer sinner than you so he sort of, his his grace the Lord's grace has sort of uh, you know encompassed every every single every single soul every single child and every single difficulty in, in and um, problem in the body uh, and uh, the breach, you know, he's, he's covered every breach that that, that was broken. Uh, he had, he had that understanding, that love, and that through his ministry, through his testimony, through the gifts and grace the Lord equipped him with, that fullness. He had the completeness really, and and he took that all the way through the end, and and finished the course, which is it's uh, glorious. It's um. Uh, it's unspeakable really to to measure and you know uh, commend it's, it's it's beyond beyond my ability to commend such a, a testimony of faith and example and um, the other debate is about Paul was what well what was Paul's sin because he said I've got oh Lord take this fawn away from me and uh, and the Lord said no my grace is uh, sufficient for your weakness so um, to keep him humble to keep him reliant and not not to take root and get too big for his boots get you know to you know to offend the Lord and you know for a deny him in his heart for that minute because you know the Lord the Lord kept him humble um, so he could uh, remain faithful to that, that um, the testimony he was uh, serving, the testimony he was giving. Uh, so the, the the debate was, well, what, what is the sin of Paul? What's the sin of Paul? I think the sin, and again, I'm just adding my 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 quota, you know. And and uh, I I think the the sin, let's say the sin, the whole, all of his sins, the sin covers all of that. And I think. Paul's sin was what he done against the church and I think it's his coming once he was saved understanding his um, his seed his uh, genetic inheritance from Benjamin from Jacob and the, how that uh, transgression aggression from the truth throughout his life and throughout his forefathers and his zealousness for the the law and and the old testament and the the school of thought he would have belonged to you know in in the in the in the in the jewish faith in, in judaism and uh, he would have rubbed shoulders with all all the elders and all the uh, nobles in 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 jerusalem of that day and he, his sin may have been his patriarchal blessing being focused in iniquity rather than in in the living God, in 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 the Messiah to come, and more more so on the like the Jews on the you know on the temple and on. The, you know, throwing the baby out of the bathwater and keeping all the chief seats and uh, being the leaders, being the forerunners. I think that was more in line of what his sin was, that height of iniquity, that height. And then the, the fall of Paul was from that height to become a nothing, to become a nobody, to become a fool. For the Lord to say, hey, Paul, why are you kick against the pricks? Why... You know why are you kicking? Why are you serving these, this ideology and fighting against 
you know, you're, you're kicking against the truth and it's causing you all this adversity and grief and frustration and I think that's that more encompasses what beat Paul up, that was his sin, that was his fall, fall from grace, he fell from grace, he was a chosen seed of Israel, he'd have had some gracious blessings the Lord wouldn't have denied, even though he sinned, he would have still um, be entitled to those, uh, those uh, hereditary blessings from, you know, the uh, the fathers of um, Jacob and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the patriarchal blessings upon the the chosen seed and Paul was like the baby he was in the baby line, he was uh, Joseph's younger brother so there's also some, a lot of symbology and um, shadows and types and I think that was his fall from grace so he went from one height to the pit and then the Lord, you know, like the Lord's transfiguration, then the Lord in Gethsemane and, you know, right down in the base of it, right down in the bottom, drinking all the dregs and then then being lifted up on the cross for the sins of the world. You know, that's the pattern that Paul went through for us. That, so we could have, we could be partakers of that fullness and that love and that, that grace of our Lord and Saviour. Um, so Paul is such a a wonderful type in the uh, scriptures and I think it shows and with I think with that understanding it helps it helped me to realize that um, you know the depths and the the graciousness in the holy scriptures and you know the living water and how awesome they are how wonderful they are and uh, you know uh, not to, not to be neglected not to be you know casually treated they are a precious uh, it's a, the holy words a precious gift it's um i don't know about any other believer but it's one of those things would be the first thing i grabbed if the house was on fire I'd throw it out the window uh, as well as my own life but, uh, and everyone else you know I cared for but it, the scriptures would be a consideration to not to not to lose my scriptures um, but I'm guilty of neglecting them I'm guilty of neglecting my testimony at times uh, so um, I wanted to share those things in, 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 in the hope that it will infuse people, it will inspire people, it will lift people, encourage people as it's encouraged me and that, hence that's why I'd like to share these thoughts so like um, as the scriptures are a standard Paul's a standard and as Christ's a standard that's been revealed through Paul and that's been revealed through all the people in the church for us and that's the standard that we, that the saints measure um, a, a lot of people dismiss Paul as an apostle and that, uh, they're actually blowing their head off they're actually shooting themselves um, Paul is an intricate, he is like the the pen cap on the Lord's fountain pen you can't, you can't take him out of uh, the, the Lamb's Book of Life. You can't take Paul, the Apostle, our brother in Christ, you cannot take him out of the Scriptures. Um, if you're a Jew and you, an Old Testament Jew, and you, you don't want to accept that Paul was from the tribe, like you didn't want to accept Jesus was um, from the seed of Jesse, so he it was invented that he, his mother was a whore and got raped by a Roman sentry, you know. They, because he, that, that people are frightened, they want to make up a lie about to cover up what they won't accept themselves. And it was probably the same with Paul. You know, oh, Paul wasn't, he was only half Jewish, his dad was Roman. Well, we don't actually know. His dad might have been a Jew and moved, uh, you know, moved to Rome and brought Roman citizenship for his, fa for his son. And, you know, and Paul was 
both. He was a Roman citizen, he was a free man, and he was also a seed of Benjamin, so he was he was a Roman and he was a Jew. He is such an incredible piece and there's so much you could overlook if, you, if you're not careful. Um, and all, all, the, all the teachings throughout the scriptures and then you see his heart, where his heart was and where his heart goes and every, every new place he goes is he's, he's always looking for his own people, he's always wanting to get the Jews, he's wanting to get the Jews, you see, because that's his whole ministry is for Israel. Because Paul's, Paul's, Paul's focus was not, Paul's gospel wasn't just for the church, Paul's gospel went right through to the end, to the, uh, you know, to the Jews, because he was a Jew, and he was a regrafted Jew, so he was one of the first regrafted seed and one of the most blessed of lines grafted into the Lord. So the blessings that come through Paul was the fullness, was that that bud of of life through the through the church, and that 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 was um, because he was grafted into the vine. So he was a testimony for Israel. He was the hope of Israel. He had to carry the hope of Israel through the church age, through the, through the loss, I, it's hard to understand why, you know, the Jews were, you know, they're deafened and blind and it's like, they, oh, it's impossible for them to get saved then, so they're going to perish, oh, what's it all, you know, it's hard to exegete how, how, how um, a seed of Israel can get saved in the time of grace when their hearts are hard, hardened and they're blinded. What, you know, is there any hope? Paul had that, that conflict of heart, of that, of, uh, of that being the standard and the hope for Israel to take that forward. And he's done it, he's completed it. He, he's, he was victorious in Christ. And we have the preserved word and that's what that's what um, again one day will be believed by the believing Jews in Israel when they come back to their Messiah when they, when they realise their salvation then they will accept Paul then they will accept the Holy Word the, the new and everlasting covenant given in Jesus Christ revealed in the, the New Testament sealed with the Lord's blood the holy precious blood of the Lamb and all this, all, all, all his children, all his seed, spilled with their blood and sealed. It's a lawful, living record. It's a, um, it's like four, four key pieces of forensic evidence in a, a murder case, in a unsolved murder. Where's the body? Well, we have a, a merciful God who's forgot about the crime. He, he's more out. He's more more concerned about the uh, criminals being saved, you know, being being caught and treated and forgiven uh, rather than executed and condemned. You know, he's um, merciful, he's outstretched, but he's just and he can't deny his justice, so anybody denies his word, his son will reap his justice, but anybody accepts his son will harvest is eternal mercy. God is forever mercy. But if you're outside the mercy, you're you're under judgment. So we have a wonderful record to save us. We have a testament of Jesus Christ and that was revealed in the Apostle Paul. <coughs> Excuse me. Um I think I've covered about everything I wanted to. Uh, yep. Uh, well, I had an, 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 an analogy that came to mind. Uh, and I can't remember wh why I why it came to mind. I was thinking of it. I'm just going to say what it was and then hopefully it, the idea will come back. Uh, if you... Now... 
imagine an old grandfather asleep in his chair and, and then his grandchildren while they're sleeping while he's sleeping start to build up build over him like um, like a structure with Lego or Meccano or whatever whatever is available to children construction toys and and then they start to build up this scaffolding up the granddad's legs and then over his arms and bodies and uh, uh, this big monstrosity like covering covering this old man uh, and and then he wakes up and just shrugs it all off and it all breaks and uh, he gets up and chuckles and walks off uh, uh, and I had a, a likeness to that and I, and I can't think of the life of me what that likeness was but I wanted to include for some reason I wanted to include that but I've lost the train of my thoughts so I'll, I'll leave it there for now because I, I can't think of what it was but and it had something to do with um, perhaps not reading your scriptures uh, you fall asleep and uh, the devil's there and you build a net around you, you build a structure, a framework around you, your inactivity, your, your uh, idleness or, or your backsliding, whatever it is, you're, you're, full of, you're not fall asleep in a physical sense and you're, die, you're spiritually fall asleep. You're spiritually stop looking and to, uh, to stay in single to Christ and then you, you, you become un, under, there's no nourishment, you can't, you can't produce any fruit, you can't, uh, you, you, you've turned away from uh, grace, so you, you, you're out of help really, you're out of fellowship, and you, you, you can't, you can drift, so you could become like that old granddad, and these little devils come around you, and then they start, camping up around you and start building <laughs> building like this sticks and brambles and all stuff all around you and then all it takes is for you to wake up and stand up and shrug it all off and um, once you get back into fellowship but that was what the analogy was for it was just to um, compare with what happens when we're not reading our scriptures when um, and I'm guilty so I have the foresight of this the knowledge of this experience and uh, it's so easy to slip back and to fall out of fellowship even and it starts with scriptures it starts with prayer it starts with you know any 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 little thing that that has been given for us to benefit us to to bless the Lord, and we we do the opposite, uh, and and then we f we can fall asleep in a spiritual sense, and then we could sin, and then the Lord could put us to sleep because we've become no good really, and perhaps you're not I don't know you're not going to get not going to get back from certain things, and uh, so the Lord mercifully takes people um, to heaven. But I'm no expert, so anyway, anybody struggling with scriptures, I'd like you know, I'm, this is what this is for as an encouragement, as to claim the blessings, to study the Book of Revelation, it's a wonderful uh, blessing because it comes of a promise if we we study it, the Lord will bless us, and it is a wonderful blessing to study any of the books of the scriptures, but it's so hard, it can be like a chore. It's a spiritual thing, so you you have to be in the spirit to be hungry for that spirit. And if you fall out of, fall asleep a bit, you you, you don't realise how hungry you are. You're so starving, you you you're delirious, and um, you, you you know sometimes you need uh, somebody to come up and pop some water on, put some water on your lips and quench you first, and then put a bit of food in your mouth to get your appetite up and um, so I hope this is an appetizer for somebody and to uh, consider those things and the analogy and the dangers how the Satan is on the sidelines ready to sift people and um, it, it, that's dangerous, that's serious 
you know, and that could affect people in your own life that you could have potentially been a blessing to. So if anyone is um, at rock bottom and feels like throwing a towel in, I, I just encourage that person to take the Lord's hand and start afresh, you know, have a... He, the Lord can bring you up to speed, the Lord can, you know, make all that new like he did at the first and in, encourage you to just carry on going. Um, uh, the Lord's, like the Lord were, uh, learnt patience through the things he suffered. He learnt obedience by the things he suffered, as we do, as we learn patience. Um, I let go of patience, but the Lord's eternally patient. I let go of mercy and long-suffering, but the Lord is eternally, constantly long-suffering, and he's constantly merciful, he's constantly gentle, he's constantly just and strict and firm, and he has a piercing eye, but he's merciful and understanding and full of all compassion, and he, there's not, there's not a breach, there's not a, there's not a route you've taken that the Lord hasn't been down and covered. You know the, the, you know the, the Holy Ghost has been vexed so much. The Lord's felt all that. He's drank all that. He knows all these things. He's 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 turned it all around. He's the only way. So I pray to people in in the body that are perhaps in the body of Christ who who perhaps fallen away a bit. Um, to take take the Lord's hand and be restored to that way, to be lifted back in the way and back in back into fellowship with the Word, and to to uh, um, enjoy the blessings, to 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 enjoy the the, the the fruits of the Spirit and the, the you know the, 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 the promises of heaven, you know the our our, our gifts in heaven, our treasures in heaven. Uh, um, we have wonderful treasures in heaven. We have Paul, we have well, the Lord, we have the patriarchs, there's so many treasures in heaven. We have people we've never met, strangers uh, that aren't as um, famous as Paul. You know, we, I, I, well, I think one of my treasures would, would would love to be, you know, seeing my family through, through the ages. You know, I hope that, that some of them were saved and then you know, being restored with those people. There's so many spiritual treasures and the Holy Spirit can open your heart and your mind to those treasures. But you have to study the scriptures, the spiritual water, the word, to keep you from being deceived by saucy spirits, by seductive spirits, by the wrong sort of unsober spirits. That's why it's imperative to stay in the word to stay stay close to the lord because it's so dangerous if you stray from that and um, we have that exemplar we have that brother that father figure that, that christ used um in paul and paul is beloved by us he beloved us for christ and he should be beloved by us for everybody's sake. Um, so that's my testimony of Paul and in Christ. And I pray this be a a blessing and a, a useful for the Lord to use. And I'm, I'm going to close there in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.